So this is uh, the first part of the technical content. I call this the shared memory substrate. It's about these two important concepts, coherence and consistency. We'll explain all of that uh, in due time. Um, the best way to understand these is really to think hard about them and read textbook uh, using whatever order you want. I prefer personally thinking about problem, trying to come up with my solution, uh, but you can uh, read the text too. Uh, if you chose the Dubois text, it's much simpler, less detailed. Uh, it's really just an introductory section and a whole chapter about it. The more hardcore version, the more detailed version is listed here. It explains a whole bunch of things. Uh, what are the different shared memory architectures, the symmetric multiprocessor or SMP, the alternative distributed shared memory architecture or DSM. These are all uh, different from the message passing multi-computer. Remember we talked about those where you have to pass uh, messages explicitly for multiple program threads to cooperate. So um, shared memory architecture is simpler in concept because you read and write memory variables. You don't have to package them and send them around. So that's nice uh, in theory, but how do we put them together? It turns out the memories cannot really be shared shared. It, to some extent it can, if it's a smaller machine, just put a few processors, hook them up with memory. Uh, in general, if we want a, a reasonably sized system, this is a problem. So it's really, how do we project an illusion of a big memory that is shared by everything and it's correct. And in this process, we come up with problems. The first problem is coherence and consistency. Um, from the programmer's view, uh, this is being dealt with in these textbook locations. Um, and the rest is about how do you implement cache coherence? It turns out there are a couple of ways you do this. You can do it in the snooping-based co coherence. You can use a directory-based coherence. They're, they all have their uh, individual implementation challenges and optimization solutions. We'll even get into um, a, a slightly more advanced topic uh, about a new way of organizing multiprocessors called cache-only memory access. So it's a fairly big topic. And some of that uh, of, of the state of the art is not even captured by this more uh, detailed textbook, a big tome, um, partly because it's a quite old book. So some of the newer support, which you have to deal with, um, is really covered in literature and hardware menu, and that's mostly, we'll spend a lot of time discussing this. And finally, we'll also touch upon a topic that has been thoroughly explored and it's still considered to be a uh, very useful way of improving performance and that's threat level speculation. So let's go back to the basic. What is the problem? Again, it's a shared memory system. We have one memory that is shared for this purpose. Let's just consider we have a bus and we have processors with their private caches uh, around they're all connected to a bus, and let's say they're reading, writing. So what is the problem? What exactly is the cache coherence problem? So you, know, you all know what a cache is. It tries to buffer some uh, recently accessed memory locations so that future accesses to these locations are faster uh, without having to go through the bus and to the memory. So let's imagine I have a cache line uh, holding a variable called u, and it right now has the content of five. And so if one of the processor reads it, no problem, it's a cache miss, we fetch from memory. Now it's, it is in the cache, um, five. But what if uh, another processor tries to read it? Again, no problem. But the real uh, issue now is we have two separate copies that can be man man manipulated by P1 and P3 independently. Let's imagine what happens when P3 tries to write. 
In a uniprocessor, this is not a problem. You change your cache, next time you read, you will read the updated value. The problem now is for the same shared memory illusion, remember it's an illusion, we want this to be one variable that everybody accesses. Um, but in fact, there are three copies, as you can see. One in P3's cache, one in P1's cache, and there is one in the memory. So now, if P1 wants to read, what happens? Without any hardware support, as you can clearly see over here, it should return a 5, and therefore breaking the shared memory illusion. So that's the cache coherence problem, that you have multiple copies of the same, theoretically the same piece of data. And as a result, they should always be the same, but in reality, there are multiple copies of them. They're not necessarily always the same value. They're not necessarily always coherent. So we need to keep them coherent. So how do you do that? This is where you should pause the video and think about it. What would you do? And a third problem here, uh, uh, sorry, uh, and then, uh, another problem here is when we have uh, another cache coming in um, trying to load the value, how do we supply the value, okay? So there are a couple of ways of solving it. You probably have thought about it, but one of the ways, uh, actually the more common way, is called invalidation-based uh, coherence protocol, which means when someone writes a copy, that's when it gets not coherent, okay? If everybody's reading, we all copy from the same master copy, um, and let's forget about any uh, error problem, transient error due to hardware, then it's no problem. It's the same copy. It's multiple copies, but it's the same value. The problem comes when you write. And the solution is when you write, you don't allow multiple copy to exist anymore and then you wouldn't have the problem. So again, someone reads, fine. Another, uh, another thread reads, fine. Nothing needs to be done because um, it's all just copy of the same value. But the minute someone wants to write, we cannot allow this to happen when there are multiple copies. So before we allow the, the write to happen, we need to tell all the other caches to get rid of their copy and that's called invalidation, make the data invalid. And in that case, we're fine. Now, there is only one copy in the cache. And um, when P3 goes on to read, just like in a uniprocessor system, it will read the up-to-date value and everything would be fine. Now, the second half of the problem is now everybody else will not have the cache line in their cache and they will have a miss. So let's say P1 issues a read, <clears throat> what happens? Okay. It's going to go to the memory to grab the value, <clears throat> but we have to intervene here to stop P1 from reading from the memory. Okay. And in this particular case, thanks to the bus being shared, we actually can, P3, the processor, uh, the node, P3, can detect this read and stop the action of going to the memory and supply the data. Now, when we supply the data, again, there will be multiple copies in the system. They should all be the same. So what we tend to do is to make all of them the same and everybody can only read from it. So that's uh, the general idea to invalidate because write is what caused uh, data to become not coherent and you uh, get rid of multiple copies. Is that it? Okay. It's actually um, not such a simple thing. So why do we do invalidate? What else can you do? Okay. You could update. And why do we update the memory when we're intervening? So there are lots of these little questions um, to consider. And in this particular case, 
the reason you intervene is because if you don't, the next time when someone uh, issues a read, you have to intervene again. So by updating the memory, now you can drop this responsibility of maintaining the coherence of that line. So there are all these um, detailed decisions. And then suppose we decide to go with write and validate and uh, we implement it. Now what do we need to make this happen? How do we implement this? Remember what we just showed, the animation was simply, this is what we want to do, but how do we actually make it happen? Okay. So we need to know who's reading and writing. And, um, and that, could, that may not be easy if the system is very big. Imagine if I have a million processor. How do we know who's reading and writing what at any particular moment? Do we really have to know everybody else's action? And is that even feasible? Right? What if the system size is really large, a million processor? So there, as you can see, this is not such an easy thing. It's easy in concept. Okay. Data can get not coherent with respect to each other. Let's solve the problem. Let's always make sure there's one copy if you're changing it. So the concept is easy. The implementation is difficult. Um, in a uh, distributed shared memory multiprocessor, which I'm showing here, so this is usually uh, created because we want scalability and we want to leverage commodity uh, off the shelf, commercial off the shelf products. So COTS products, right? So these tend to be existing already. That's your workstation, small server, your desktop. Someone has made uh, the motherboard already. Interconnect is another component that you might already have high performance interconnect. You put them together, you buy, you get a lot of these nodes, put them together, you have a large machine. So that's good. But they are not kept memory coherent. Each one is an independent unit. Okay? So if you want to implement um, a, a cache coherent system and write in validation based uh, cache coherence protocol, you probably need to add something to help you along that. And we'll get to that later. And that component is called the directory. So let's ignore, let's say all of that we can do. We can give you whatever you need. You want to uh, monitor who writes the data. We'll, we'll make that happen. Um, let's say you um, want a directory to keep track of who's writing to what, who's reading from what, we'll make that happen. At this point, there is actually a more subtle problem, which is why we're going to explain that problem first. But pause the video again, think about it. Suppose we have a write invalidate flavor of cache coherence. What that means is, let's say you need something to make invalidation happen. We'll give it to you. You implement it. You need to send a message from node one to node two. We'll supply the hardware and uh, necessary control logic for that to happen. Okay, so now you can invalidate anything you want. You can go through the process of making that happen. Is that it? Now will my machine work in the sense that I will write some program, I run it on the machine, I can imagine that this is really just a whole bunch of thread running on multiple uh, processors that are directly attached to this one gigantic shared memory. And the program will behave according to my intuition. It's not an easy answer. You might guess from the question itself that it's not, but why? Can you imagine why? I'll give you a hint. I don't know if this helps. I don't know, you know what what game you run, but um, there is this uh, plant versus zombie uh, very early on, it was popular and for a long time, um, they didn't have uh, a version two available. By the time um, it came out, it has this uh, tagline, it's about time, uh, which is a pretty funny pun because it's about time we've been waiting for so long, but also that second version is a lot of time travel. 
um, kind of thing. So it's about time, or more precisely, it's about timing. Really think about it before you move on.